but then he was like he goes well i mean you've kind of peaked now like that's it <laughs> and i was like what the f- man <laughs> yeah i mean it just, you're not gonna get any better than this On this week's episode, it is a very special episode. I know I say that all the time, but this week is especially special because not only do I have a returning guest on the show, I have two returning collaborators who were with me for the summer of PS2. Andrew and Gianna from the Experience Point are here. Guys, say hi. Hi. And they are joining me to interview the incredibly kind and talented Sissy Jones. How are you doing tonight, Sissy? Good. How are you guys? Doing well. uh, so I am Josh. I'm the one who interviewed you last time. Now you can actually see my ugly face. Um, Stop. So, <laughs> then uh, Andrew and Gianna are my other friends here. Friends? Nice to meet Hi. you. you nice to meet you. Josh, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, thank me... you guys for waiting so late. I'm pretty sure you're on the East Coast, but I really <laughs> <laughs> We are. You're fine. That's why they decided to wear um, their pajamas. I, yeah. on the other hand... Oh my god! Got my bad girl coven shirt. <laughs> I'm so jealous. That's amazing. I'm just wearing a Totoro onesie. Send us a PO box. We'll we'll ship you one. Yeah. Our our friend made it. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. I totally will. That's amazing. If you want, I can Photoshop it to be Lilith instead. <laughs> I would not. I don't Although know. I don't think Lilith would take too kindly to um, being in the Eda's <laughs> bad girl coven. <laughs> season two I don't yeah know. we'll we'll see <laughs> not to spoil anything right out the gate i know no, i also want to work again so yeah <laughs> so uh andrew and gianna host a youtube channel called the experience point and so that's why you can see his logo back there very cool i like uh, it thank you i designed it <laughs> <laughs> we i've been friends with them since well i've been friends with andrew since college and then i met driana through andrew because those two are a cute adorable couple who are married, oh, married. <laughs> adorable married couples <laughs> That's and, really the, cool. and this worked out because i was spending the day i know it's late but i was spending the day doing baby stuff all day so oh. thank you for spending a couple moments of your free time with us for tonight um oh, thank you Oh geez. Sorry. I am actually I this is this onesie is hot. I do have a shirt on underneath this, I promise. It's not weird or creepy. I'm just whatever. I know my house is freezing. Like I live in LA, you know, it's like 70 degrees during the day, but at night it gets cold and my house has no insulation. And so like I'm walking around in like bunny slippers and my Call of Duty sweatshirt and I'm so cold. It's ridiculous. Then you go outside and everything's on fire. Literally, like we <laughs> we went outside today we're all like bundled up and i was like oh god it's so hot take off all the clothes all right i think we are all set unless there's guys do you have any other questions for her or sissy is there anything else that we need to worry about that you want us to let us know beforehand um i would definitely uh i have a stream monday morning for call of the sea that i'd like to plug that's it this won't be out by then well, shit. <laughs> but it will be out after Call of the Sea comes out. So I wanted okay. to, I did want to ask you without, of course, without any spoilers, uh, NDAs are a bitch. So we want to make sure that we don't ruin anything of that. So, um, yeah, I can finally say that who my male co star is in that game. So that's nice. Yuri Lowenthal, right? Yuri Lowenthal, Spider Man himself. Spider Man himself. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did such a good job with that game. Holy crap. He does such a great job with everything. I know. Like he's he's a great he does a great job at human <laughs> at existing. At existing. He, and he's definitely one of those like chameleons in the industry too where it's like he he might not be as well known as like a Steve Bloom where it's like the first syllable you're like okay, yeah, okay. I know understand. <laughs> but he's like in everything. You don't want to be that recognizable cuz then people start complaining that you're in everything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, you want to be like, I'm in everything. You had no idea, but I am literally in everything. Yes. Or instead, like when they hear a character, they're like, ah, oh, that's this person. It's like, no, we want to like, like reestablish that this is a new character. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, have you ever had anyone say like, oh man, you should have tried out for this part, or you should audition for this, and you're like, I, I, I was. Did (laughs) really? I did audition it, or yes, uh, or yeah, that was actually me. Yeah, there's a there's a game, um, Crash Bandicoot, and um, yes, I saw. I've heard of it. I've heard of that series before. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) uh, 
it really flew it under the radar game. nobody played it well but, but apparently there's like three girl characters and three of us who were in the game and for the longest time we couldn't figure out which one of us voiced the character because they don't tell us <laughs> And uh, finally, I was like, well, someone please just send me a clip. And so someone put together like a smash clip of, of her. I was like, oh, that's me. That's that's me. <laughs> but it was that's this awesome. weird like go around for like six months of like, I don't know what they're they don't tell us what the names are. when we're there. So anyway, um, I love the conversation. <laughs> yeah. I could talk forever. Well, that's real nice. Well, that's why I always like to kind of before I think I was I told you before Sissy when we recorded back in August which once again thank you so much for doing this I I, yeah, I love great. having repeat guests and getting to know people more but uh like I like to have this kind of banter to start off because otherwise it just feels weird walking right into like a like all right here we are it's, it's questions yeah. exactly <laughs> there's no greeting at that point here's right. just work right <laughs> exactly and I, I never want anyone on either my podcast and I would assume your guys show to ever feel like an interview is work. It should just be people hanging out, talking about stuff they love. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's part of why we wanted to name it the experience point where it, it's literally just about getting people together and sharing their experience, whether it's about a movie or a game or a TV show. Uh, and um, yeah, so I, I feel the same way about our countless guests that we've been able to talk to over the years. <laughs> That is a bold face lie. Um, you are actually our first guest. So oh, yay. Uh, fun. we're very pleased to um, have you on. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. No, that's really special. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we are both uh, fans of the Owl House. Um, I guess we can just jump right into that. Yeah, let's just jump into it because this sounds like jumping into a territory. Yep, that's, yeah. a, that's a segue. Um, yeah. We were kind of blown away when we when we found out about this show been so much fun yeah yeah i had actually finished it recently and um i i, I was constantly I, I said this to to driana today i was like I'm, I'm gonna say this to sissy and it's gonna sound like you know blowing smoke up you but like one of my favorite things is honestly like the the voice um performances like like you and wendy and like the, literally the whole cast are, are probably the strongest point about that show and, I, and i'm not just saying that like there's so much character to the characters and like we watch a lot of like you know new cartoons and like a lot of the performances tend to be like a bit forgettable um or if it's like a specific art style or something that doesn't quite grab you um but but this kind of this show had it all and and and, and talking about like um I, I listened to your previous episode with josh and um a big point that you made was um there's a lot more shows out there for like young women and young LGBT and, and it just kept piling on and, and on and on and on. So like, uh, how, how was that as like almost checking all the boxes as to like, this is what a progressive show should be? Well, I mean, so the cool thing is I didn't actually know most of that when, uh, when I booked the job, it was just like, you know, please be a Disney witch, please be a Disney witch. You know, like I, you know, <laughs> I, I auditioned for stuff all day, every day. Like, my job is not doing the job well by the time I get to the job the check is going to cash my job is doing auditions and that is uh many hours and unpaid right and so it's just chucking things at the wall and seeing what sticks and I remember that audition um very particularly because I just loved her like I I was like oh, oh I feel this character like she's she's you know got this tough exterior shell but she's just ooey gooey on the inside but doesn't want anybody to know about it um Same. And, and I really related with her. And then, um, you know, I had the call back and then I booked it and it was amazing. And then I went on a record and it was great. Um, and I knew that they had um, um, Nikki as the, the lead um, and that they made a point that she was not white, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, but I didn't know they were gonna pull the LGBTQ angle until, um, until it came out. And I was like, God, what a, what a coup. Yeah, like, that's so amazing, <laughs> you know, to 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 be in this time when Disney is ready to take that jump, and um, it's just been awesome, you know. And and it's funny. There's been a lot of speculation about like is Lilith is Lilith gay, and I'm like, nope, I have no idea. There's nothing. I know nothing. Yeah, like she's just 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 love her for who she is, and let it be that. Please don't put the pressure on the writers to make it, to make it that. That's how it should be for everything. <laughs> But it's not like like yeah. uh, Steven Universe, I think, went through a huge um, fan pressure moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it's so canon. I know nothing. <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah. 
just let her be. Um, but it, but it's been really, really cool to be a part of. And, um, you know, Dana, who created the show is really fun. I don't know if you know that that little like the small little character that's white with a big nose. With a big nose. That's Dana. That's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world of the triangle. The world of the triangle. Yeah, (laughs) that's Dana's little avatar. So um, she's just fun and quirky and brilliant. And, um, you know, watching her work uh, and God, she has poured her blood, sweat and tears into this show. And I'm so happy for her, you know, to watch Mm -hmm. it be as well received as it has been and i can really feel it the love is definitely there because like i mean you know throwing out my age right there i'm 25 going on 26 i've been watching cartoons for a hot minute uh (laughs) and like this is like the cream of the crop and like i feel seen it's entertaining like you can watch it as a one-off or you could binge it and like there's substance it's not just the slapstick throwing out cheap jokes here and there like it's it's got heart so like thank you for being a part of that Thank them for hiring me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank everyone for this show existing. Well, you you certainly breathe like a a certain like bit of life into it, and it, it's really one of the things I noticed. Um, maybe just because I knew I was going to talk to you, but I started really paying attention to um, Lilith and kind of how she speaks or how how you speak, and I. It's, I, I don't think it's ever been more apparent that two non-related people are siblings. Like there is so much of, of your characters and, and Ida like in each other's performances and, and I hear it and like off, if I'm like looking away while, while I'm hearing that real quick, I'm like, I don't, I don't know who said that. Was that, was that Lilith <laughs> or, or Ida? And it's like, I have a, a sibling, but, but she's younger and she's a girl. So it's not like we <laughs> talk similarly. So I imagine that's, I mean, it's kind of like when Josh and, and his brothers talk, it's like, there's a certain similarity there. So was that intentional or like, did you, did you both go in, you and Wendy uh, go in and, and kind of no, do that intentionally or? We record in a vacuum always. Really? And you know, the funny thing for me is um, I grew up being a fan of Wendy's. You know, I, I used to watch um, shows that were way beyond my years, <clears throat> like Dream On on HBO and, you know, all this other stuff. My parents <laughs> didn't know that I was sneaking HBO at the time. Um, well, it's but, on the internet now. <laughs> I know. But I remember being a fan of hers. And um, gosh, when they told me that she was playing my younger sister, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, it's like, oh, well, Thank you. But this, again, like, that's what I love about voiceover, right? Is it doesn't matter how old you are. But um yeah, no, it is funny. We have a very similar timber, um, but I don't, I don't know that it was planned. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that they were uh, particularly interested in in my ability to carry emotional heft, um, which is why they leaned on me um, for for Lilith, which I was more than happy to do. I mean, mm-hmm. God, what a gift! Yeah. Um, I have a question. What is it like portraying like a messy older woman character and like messy in the fact that like she's held up at such a high standard and very scholarly and academic, but then the moment Ida like gets under her skin, she reverts to like her childlike state. Um, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah they're suddenly any, just like, little kids so? again. Yeah, do you have any like brothers or sisters that you could like, you know, like, I know exactly what that's like. I know, of, I have an older brother, um, but we don't have that kind of relationship. Um, I, I am a, a, a studier of people, you know, and I have friends who have younger siblings or watching sisters together um, where, you know, something turned when they were children. Um, and it, it, it was such a joy to do because, you know, we're, we're kind of coming into this golden age of of women being represented in media you know it's not just the damsel in distress it's not just the the video game vixen with the giant cans it's they're actually three-dimensional really interesting messy um human beings and it's so much fun god it gives me so much life um to be able to have those beats and not just be stuck in the canister of you're the mean older sister. You got to be the mean older sister the whole time and you're bad and you're evil and there's nothing good about you. Everyone's going to hate you, you know? Um, so to, to be able to break that mold, I mean, as a witch, right. Mm-hmm. Suddenly being yeah, a witch so, isn't so a bad great. thing anymore. Well, and it reminds me like that, that dynamics is, I, I haven't finished season one yet, but it, that <sighs> dynamic you're talking about, I'm at, I'm three, four episodes away 
four episodes call me. away. <laughs> call me oh, when you the get last there, three. Like what? I know the last uh, three. But I was gonna say uh, like Amity kind of has that idea, that mentality where she is, or that whole concept where she seems as the bully but the episode i just finished watching is where you find out why she ditched willow why she was forced to by her yeah. parents to and it was heartbreaking it's so funny. heartbreaking to see um and you're right like that you see these three-dimensional characters that are no longer these just one-dimensional women they actually have full-fledged personalities and it's not just for window dressing and I remember when we recorded last time, one of the things like that you're really passionate about that you're really trying to get more of is uh, women doing movie trailers. And have you yeah. seen, now it's only been about four or five months since we recorded last, I guess about four. Has there been more of that recently? I feel like I remember oh. seeing you tweeting some stuff, but I, I it's been a bit. Uh, so I did book a campaign for a very small movie, but you have to remember, you know, uh, in the times of COVID, <laughs> there really is no like, Coming to theaters. <laughs> true, true. Coming to your house. <laughs> Coming to streaming. Coming to your laptop. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I did book a small um, indie trailer campaign and they literally opened in theaters September 11th. And I was like, are you sure? Okay. These are the words on the paper. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, um, it is definitely a thing that I'm still working towards. I was really hoping that Wonder Woman 84 was going to have a woman on the trailer. Um, and it looks like they're just going with no VO whatsoever, which sucks. Yeah. Um, so I'll just keep banging on that ceiling. You know, it's uh, it's time for it to come down. They're yeah. just replacing all VO in movie trailers with just the Inception horn. Like, the <laughs> that's it. And then you I don't know. have to pay somebody. It's just, can we just use that sound? Yeah, okay. We're going to put it like 13 times through the whole trailer. Whoever could... did that initial horn is getting royalties out the ass. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing is um, that I do do a lot for trailers is um, celebrity sound alikes. So if like hmm. Charlize Theron is in the movie, um, they don't want to pay her to come in for a pickup because she's a million dollars an hour. And so they call me to sound like her to replace dialogue for the trailer you know if they have to like replace an f-bomb or you know tell a, a story with a sentence that doesn't exist in the movie they'll call in someone like me and um and it makes it in the trailer i mean it's not trailer money it's not like you know the money that you get for saying july 7th rated r like that's yeah you know, that's the big bucks somehow. that's awesome yeah who, who is your uh, best celebrity impression then i did charlie theron for years yeah um and uh, yeah I did all of her stuff for the Huntsman and Atomic Blonde, um, which was great. And I actually heard a, she had a, a Dior commercial on the television a while ago and it came on and I was like, did I do Dior? Oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's actually her. <laughs> Those <laughs> bastards steal my audition. Dior can um, afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I do a ton of those. I do Emma Thompson and Rebel Wilson and Penelope Cruz and um, Rebel Wilson, really? Yeah, you know, she's a little bit up here when she talks and she's like a little bit crazy, right? When she goes. I can see her. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I uh in your in your last episode you you talked a bit about accents for a while. Um I was curious, this may be a, a bit presumptuous of me, but I assume with all of the um accent work that you do and how familiar you have to be with certain accents, um and now that we've talked for a little bit, can you tell geographically where we are based off of our accents, if we have any? If we have any. You uh, know East Coast, but. Yeah, I know the East Coast. Um, I would say. I don't have an accent, though. At least I don't think so. No, you don't have much of an accent. Hmm. Um, I would say like North Carolina, Virginia, because it's not it's not thick Southern and it's not like Baston Habba. <laughs> And it's not, you know. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm actually from Boston this whole time. I've been, <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been uh, suppressing the accent. Uh, no, a little, little You've northern. You've kept this from uh, me for years, Andrew. Yeah. This whole time I've been a townie. <laughs> uh, a, little, a little more north. We're uh, central to eastern uh, Pennsylvania, actually. Really? Well, she got mm -hmm. that right. She just said the middle. She's like, if I, I if I had spent any more time in Philadelphia and I said I'm gonna go grab a little bit of water real quick, water, <laughs> water. A little water. water, water, yeah, ice. and <laughs> get a hoagie ice. or sorry, a hoagie. Go down to the YY and get a hoagie. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's it's funny because it, it gets so specific regionally. 
um, you know, with different accents and, and, you know, the States. And then you look at the UK and South America and stuff. It's well, that change like, doesn't the UK accents change like from street to street practically? So, yeah, it's insane. It's insane. That's but there's so some crazy. really good, you know, um, resources out there for accent learners. It's fun. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, we, we, you mentioned a little bit earlier when we were uh, in regards to the Owl House, you were talking about how great the fan feedback has been. What type of feedback have you seen I, uh, online? You know, it, it's interesting. The, the difference in fan interaction from uh, video game to animation is very different. Um, and I, I wonder if it's because in a video game, you know, you can spend hundreds of hours in a person's ear. And so there becomes a familiarity that maybe is felt from the player that I don't know. Um, but with animation, it's, it's been much more like, instead of you bitch, I can't believe you did that. It's, <laughs> oh my God, you did such a great job bringing that character to life. Right. So it's been, a, it's been a weird twist. Um, you know, I've done some games where people were pretty unhappy with my characters and, and they come attacking me. I remember you know? about Delilah. You told <laughs> Look, you wrote it. Like that. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I got death threats from Delilah and, uh, uh what? Oh, yeah. what? I didn't know the death threats part. Yeah. Well, that's um, how that game ends. Very strongly worded emails and, you know, all the stuff, but, but with Owl House, it is, oh my God, you broke my heart. Um, your portrayal was incredible. Um, you, you did a terrific job bringing this character to life. And it's, it's a much different um, uh, um, interaction, which has been really great. And, you know, and th there's, um, there's a, a, a woman in Sweden who um, does a fanfic blog. Um, <laughs> her handle is <laughs> Evil Snot Bag. <laughs> um, <Nice. laughs> she's done some incredible fanfic and she reached out to me and asked if I would... Um, voice you know a couple of little things and then sing a lullaby that she wrote um for Lilith and I did and it was gorgeous That's and it, adorable you know, it was oh, really really cool and I she and I have become now. friendly because she was very I would love respectful. to find that Josh link us to find it some kind of way yeah uh, you can find her on Twitter uh and Instagram I think uh evil snot bag um <laughs> She's and she she writes you know she does these incredible drawings right now she's doing a mashup of My Little Pony and Owl House so she's got Edith and L and oh. Lilith as My Little Ponies oh my god it's amazing she's oh. incredible that's awesome so yeah highly recommend I will awesome. send I found I found her Twitter account I can send you guys wow her, perfect that was fast Twitter you're already just typing on the side you can't so really misspell it yeah. <laughs> evil snot rag. <laughs> that's fantastic yeah. that was going to be my twitter handle but i was already taken <laughs> <laughs> since you were saying that like um video games and animation come from like different places and that like people i guess on the animation side came from more of a place of gratitude does that influence like if you like prefer to go for video game roles or like animation roles do you have a preference i like it all i mean i like that's to work cool. and um i like my job a lot <laughs> so <laughs> Um, so yeah, I really like it all. I mean, well, I remember you saying last time that unlike other voice actors that really focus in on one media type, I guess you kind of do a little bit of everything you've done. You've done voiceover for games. You've done voiceover for movies and TV shows and also for commercials and for uh, anime, uh, which I actually, I, I didn't even bring it up last time you did kaguya from naruto shippuden and like one of the, like the main villain i didn't get that far in the show That's but top I, villain season 537 <laughs> right, yeah. no, i think it's 538 actually well, shit. yeah actually that's uh i'm getting my first funko uh my first funko doll what oh that's fantastic <laughs> that was your first one really i'm surprised yeah. well i mean delilah didn't have a body and well, see yeah. delilah's face. they just yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be anything. surprised if Funko put out a Delilah air. Funko Pop and it was just a, like an empty box. <laughs> just a box oh, no, they, would put, they would put the, the lake sign up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. you know, did I tell you a fan made me a pork pond sign? Yep. Oh yep. That's awesome. It's in my living room right now. I, I was but thinking about what you're talking about, how the different reactions you've gotten from fans based off a of video game or shows. I just wonder if it's like fan expectations that cause that reaction. Like fans expect more of video games for some reason, I guess. Like, I wonder if that's a thing because when it's a when it's a show, it's I don't know, I guess 
it's easier. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this actually, but well, I just feel like the expectations are just different. I think it might I mean, if you, if you just look at the experience of it, right? Like a show, you are a third party watching a thing happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you watch the interaction of the sisters and um, Luce and Amity, you watch that happen uh, as a game more often than not, you are playing as character. So the things are happening to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's yeah. a different psychological perception of it, I think, that just makes it more personal for people. Um, and I totally get it. And especially when you get some of these games that have, you know, 600 hours, um, there's a there's a familiarity with that people start to feel with the voice actors when we're just in a room by ourselves for, you know, four hours at a time saying words. Um, so it's, you know, it's different. I wonder if it's kind of like along the same lines. I remember hearing like one of the, I don't know how to really segue into this part, but it's basically like once television came out, people became much more connected to, to television characters than movie actors because television is literally in your home. It's literally it, you're you are bringing part of that person, even if they're just portraying a character that you're bringing part of that person and that character into your home. And as we've gotten farther in media with between podcasts like the one people are listening to now or YouTube or Smash that subscribe button, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I always wanted to say that. We're going to hit the bell for some notifications. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ding. Ding. <laughs> uh, anyone else get that? Okay. Um, Rocky three reference. Anybody? Come on. Oh, okay. Great. Come uh, on. <laughs> Paul you Creed here. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like with YouTube, with podcasts and with video games, you're spending a lot more intimate time with that person or like that person spending a lot more intimate time with the media they're interacting with. So there's there's something to be said. That's why people obsess over YouTubers and obsess over podcasts. Not mine because I'm not that big, but like for with over podcasts and YouTubers and video game voiceover artists and just things in general. I mean, for crying out loud, freaking uh, CD Project Red has been getting death threats for all their delays on on Cyberpunk, and people haven't even experienced that game right. yet. They have such yeah. an emotional connection to the developer because of the amount of hours they've spent with them. So it's kind of like we're just getting further and further because the media is becoming so much more personal to everyone, which is a good thing, but also a bad thing, i.e. you've received death threats for Delilah. But also accessible. That sounds like a band name. <laughs> death threats for Delilah. <laughs> for Delilah. I like that. Um, but, but the other thing, too, is that there's an accessibility that wasn't there mm-hmm. 10 years ago. You know, and so um, I have a friend who's a, a games journalist and she's like, yeah, pretty much the mark of a of a good story these days is how many death and or rape threats you get. Mm. And I'm like, is, that's bullshit. That's, that's is this so Alana sad. Pierce by any chance? Yeah. 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 She because gets... then, you know, you're you're, you know, you're setting things off. You're you're touching on a subject that people want to in, engage with in whatever twisted way that they engage. And it's, um, you know, I hate it. I hate that part of the business. I really do. Um, by and large, people with me have been super, super great. And uh, and I feel really lucky and, and happy. And, you know, I'm just a nerd from Idaho that <laughs> gets to live my dream. So luckily, people have been pretty cool with me, except for that one yeah. guy. He can fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you hear that one guy? Get out we don't here. know you, but you're you're dead to us. <laughs> right. Yeah, with my experience as like a consumer of video games and media and also being a nerd, like I've felt that as well. Cause like, for example, like The Walking Dead, the game, like we haven't even touched on that. Like you're you're in it, you're Katya. That's one of my favorite games of all time. I've never cried so hard yeah. at a video game in my life because yeah. these characters felt like my family. And not trying to throw out any spoilers for those who probably want to play. It's it. time, yeah. guys. <laughs> Some it's only people been 10 die. Years. Yeah, many kids. It's been ten years. Can I say it now? Go it's been ten it. years. It's been ten. Katja dies. Lee dies. And like, I spent so much time like protecting them and like me, the character, me, Lee, and then like to see them go. Andrew was there when, like, when the main character died. Lee, <laughs> look at that like, facial expression. You lost your own family member, yeah. so like, I can, 
I can see how, even though it's inappropriate, you should not be getting death threats. So people do take it way more like personally. It's like happening to them because I felt that too. Like yeah. I just lost my family, Katya. I just <laughs> protected her family, and we've made it so far. And now just to like watch them go, or like choosing yeah. to have to shoot people, like just like <laughs> mind boggling. As, <laughs> as somebody who was in the room <laughs> during that entire game. <laughs> uh she cried more at that game at losing those some of those characters than she has lost losing actual family members so like i mean that speaks to like how close the specific family members were but but like you're saying it, it's such an intimate is that, a, is that a subtle burn there what <laughs> <laughs> i mean no, not, I you know which family <laughs> because like no, it was a much more tragic like zombies and like being violently taken away from yeah. you than like very real world natural things happening so yeah. that's what he means yeah. that so was not a burn. you said you well, cried really hard um I, I think it went full on screaming i don't know if it was <laughs> you couldn't even call it crying at that point <laughs> i was like okay burning me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just like it's just a testament to like how well like you guys all did those performances and and how and, and like the rest of the team with the animations and the music and just it all coming great. together into like this great bittersweet just soul crushing moment that for some reason we'd like to have happen <laughs> we're like yeah. yes hurt me more <laughs> yeah i know well so uh it's funny because i played nine characters throughout that series and the the going joke was that i was always the red shirt you know i was always gonna die like every one of my characters died sean bean of the walking dead <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know recording it so katya was my first job um yeah, that's months. wild too oh. Yeah, it was my second audition ever uh, and my first job. And um, I, recording it, I knew I, it felt special. Like I didn't understand at the time how special it was because it was my first job. But I remember meeting the other cast members. Um, they used to get together for beers in Oakland when I lived up in, in Northern California. And um, I walked in, a friend of mine invited me to go and I, I was brand new to the business. I didn't know anybody. And I walked in and I was like, hey guys, I'm Katya and they were like Katya and they're still some of my best friends um Melissa oh. Hudson who played Clementine is one of my closest friends Owen Thomas who played Omid is we were just texting earlier today Gavin Hammond who played my my hothead husband Kenny oh I love Kenny. um yeah I love we're Kenny. friends like it's it, it was it was lightning in a bottle and I I would hesitate to say I, I I don't think I've had that experience with any other single recording job ever um, cause you know, it, the way it is, you know, you could share a hundred credits with somebody and be like, Oh, you were in that thing. Cool. Me too. Rad. You know, but that one was like, Oh my God, you were in the walking dead. How did they kill you? <laughs> I was going to say, it's almost like a, uh, I don't know, misery loves company or like you have that shared trauma. So you're like, yeah. yes. Oh man. They, when they cut my head off, it was wild. <laughs> I mean, listen, that last session for Katya, I was sobbing. Oh. And, like there was no, that was not put on that was full full fledged just <laughs> i can't even imagine yeah what's been yeah, one of the hardest over the head. <laughs> yeah what's been one of the hardest roles that you've had to perform like that that was unexpectedly difficult for you to pull off hmm. that's a really good question um and it, it, it's funny because i cry really easily um and there are times Same. when i'm like i just i'm gonna need a minute you're gonna if you want me to get through this i'm gonna <laughs> um <laughs> I don't probably know. like no let it out like we're recording <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it, yeah Katya was particularly heavy because I um when I was younger I I lost a cousin who was about duck's age and uh whew, that was a real kick in the stomach um but yeah that that was I mean getting the words out for Katya was just hard it's just hard I the reason I even asked that, because I remember uh, I did an episode a couple of weeks back on The Last of Us and, and the behind the scenes episode and the behind the scenes of The Last of Us, Naughty Dog, did this amazing like hour and a half long documentary interviewing all the different people. But Troy Baker talks about the one when he had to do the scene where uh, his daughter dies. I'm blanking on his daughter's name, but at the beginning of the game and his daughter dies and he Sarah. talks about Sarah and he talks about how emotionally draining having to do that scene. And they made him do it like 40 or 50 times or something like that, just over and over and over. And cause it just wasn't what Neil Druckmann was looking for. So I was just thinking, I thought about that. I'm like, well, what could have been 
like your equivalent of that scene and Katya seems to be it just like having to this yeah. and having to go to those dark places uh to get those emotions out like I even like even someone for me who now like I'm not an actor but whenever I experience a moment like that whether it be in a movie a game or whatnot it now becomes instantly more relatable like I'm going to be a father in a couple months so now anything involving kids I'm like freaking the hell out because I'm like oh god I'm having a baby soon. This better not happen to my baby. Yeah. I got to tell you like the 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 plot decoy of dead kid is not fun for me anymore. Um, you know, I think if I had to do Katya today, um it would be a lot more challenging cuz I I have had kids since then. Um but even in uh in Firewatch, uh, you know, I was like, "All right, guys, you got to be done with the dead kids. Like you got to find a different way to tug at people's heartstrings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, even like, even truly, um, there are a couple of lines of Lilith's in the last few episodes that um, were tough to get out because they're really emotionally charged and I'm not going to spoil it for you, Josh. Yeah, if you guys Josh want to talk God. about it, I won't be upset if you spoil it. Like, <laughs> I like it a lot, but I'm not going to be upset if you spoil it. So if you, if you feel compelled to talk about it, don't hold back on my account. I, I no, no, be fun. It's my not, fault not for not preparing it. Totally but it is very emotionally charged and you can definitely tell. I think I did cry a little bit and then I drew some really angsty art afterwards. She did. Oh, I want to see it. You got to send it to oh me. Oh my God. Do you have oh, your tablet? Absolutely. <laughs> I will. No, I I'll send you. I'll send you guys. Is it okay if I send them the email that I've been contacting yes, you on? Of course, yeah. I will send it to you guys then after we're done sure. recording. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's like sibling, not not quite rivalry, but like the sibling ness going on toward the last three. Josh is just chef's mm-hmm. kiss. Man, everyone's you know. just rubbing that in my face. Now. Yeah. Really good. Um, there was <laughs> also good. Another, there was a little game um, called Eliza that came out. It was more of a graphic novel, um, but it. It was like you, you, the player, um, are a proxy for a, a therapist, essentially. And oh, these various okay. characters come in and they, you know, kind of divulge their lives. Um, and that one was really, really hard because it was really personal. Um, I played this character, Nora, who, um, uh, y- you know, wants to be an artist and she's struggling because everybody's better than she is and um, she can't seem to catch a break. And, it, you know, it, it very much spoke to my imposter syndrome from, you know, getting into this business with no back background in acting and, and all of that. And uh, um, it was just like, here's my heart. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, it was real heavy. I was also really sick when I recorded it. And I was like... <laughs> I don't know if I'm crying or if it's just not. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's adding name to my performance. Call of the sea as well. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Another Nora. Yes. <laughs> well, I one of the things I we we mentioned it when we were when we talked last time back in August, but one of the things I really love about your body of work is that you really try to focus on unconventional ideas or unconventional characters. So, like you were saying, I didn't even know about Eliza. So that's interesting. Like it's a video game from the vantage point of a therapist which who would have thought of that being a game even if it's just a visual novel or something like that that's that's still you don't see that in movies usually like a a very serious take on on that from that perspective so that's interesting but with with uh with call of the sea coming out i remember you're talking about how the main character is a, a grown woman and you don't really see that and then the other game uh what is it uh my gosh it it, you aren't the main character but it's the game where you're you're playing as an old man <laughs> yes forever ago For, forever yeah, ago forever that's ago. not out yet but i'm that, not I, the old man uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, just to make that yeah. clear. <laughs> I mean i thought you wanted to challenge yourself that's some so great so. acting <laughs> she's everybody. Um, and that's why she has a bafta <laughs> uh, i lost my things and teeth <laughs> Adventures have gone missing. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's really fun. I, I, I'm super excited for Call of the Sea again. Like you said, she's a you know, forty something year old woman, and she's in a long term marriage, and and uh, you know, her husband goes missing, and she goes, she goes off to save him, um, and in the process, kind of discovers herself, and it's 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 awesome, and I get to play opposite Yuri freaking Lowenthal, which is amazing. Um, but, you know, they approached me because of Firewatch and, and um, you know, they, they wanted to make a game that 
explored these different themes that you don't see in mainstream games. And then Forever Ago, like you're saying, is a it's a game from a German company where you, the player, play as a as an old man who's kind of on a redemption journey. And mm -hmm. um, I'm just a bartender along the way. But um, but it's really cool. You know, it's it's great as games become. Uh, easier to make with smaller teams you, you just get this breadth of experience that you don't normally see which i really love animation is yeah. a different story animation takes a long time i was gonna say like what's what do you think the biggest difference is having to work for like something like firewatch where it's made by like what eight people, eight people. and then going to literally disney where it's they eight own people. everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah all of us just on owl house um, <laughs> yeah right yeah, it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's really cool. You know, I mean, Disney's the dream, you know, you, you get into voiceover, pretty much every single person I know gets into voiceover to do animation and Disney is the, it's the mouse house, man. They're the ones that come yeah. along. Um, so it's, it's really cool. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's, I don't, I don't have really any say in the character. Um, like I did with, with Firewatch, just because it was a, a smaller, scrappier team. Mm. Um, but, but that's okay. Were you, you able to, to improv at all with, with, uh, Lilith or? A little bit. I mean, yeah. things here and there, I, I have a, a funny way of talking. Sometimes I just throw in weird pauses in places and, and they would let me keep that. But the other thing too, is that I booked it in 2017. So. And then we started recording, I think in 2018. So I had to sit on it for two years. Oh my God. You know, and I'm like, I just wanted to come out. And um, the little like Mickey Mouse shaped like red sniper dots start to mm -hmm. <laughs> move around. You're like, I never mind. I won't talk about that. And it's funny, like I, I started to get paranoid about like, who can I follow on Twitter? Because some people are, are sleuths mm -hmm. and they'll figure out who oh, you started following. I bet she's working on the thing. She's in the thing. Um, that's why you got to follow everyone and yeah. then they won't know <laughs> follow the experience point and the still loading <laughs> podcast on twitter <laughs> and then Flash everyone red button <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but yeah no it's i mean it's it's just another day in the life like i just i love this job that every day is totally different and the people i'm working with are totally different and the teams are different and um you know i'm 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 building a project right now with a friend of mine that I cannot wait to bring into the, into the wild. Um, but it's going to be a while. Um, but again, it's, it's all non-traditional characters and leads and, um, you know, cultures that we don't see mainstream all the time. And I can't wait for it. You know, it's, it's time. Yeah, it really is. So there's been a huge boom of uplifting voices that are, that aren't, often heard enough, whether it be people of color or LGBT or like we're just being flooded with stuff like the Owl House and, and She-Ra. I know Adriana has been loving She-Ra and like. You actually recommended She-Ra to me last time we talked. I watched a few episodes. I haven't been able to watch all of it, but you, yeah. you recommended that last time we spoke too. It's so good. It's so well done. And it's, it, it, it's exactly, it's everything you're saying. It's, it's inclusive and, and, you know, it's not cruel for cruelness sake. Um, I yeah. totally on a different. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Ted Lasso, um, but I, I want to <laughs> so bad because it's from the creator of Scrubs. Yes. And oh, I adore that's your show. Scrubs, so, oh, it's that's my like top show of all time. I love Scrubs. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's it's kind and it's mm. kind hearted. And there's there are women in the in the show that they set up to be adversaries, but they actually end up helping each other and caring about one another. And um, you don't see that, you mm -hmm. know? It, it, it's always like hot woman versus hot woman and they hate each other because of guy. Yeah. You know? And they wrestle and, in the mud. No, <laughs> Christ. And then they make out. <laughs> they make out, yeah. Um, <laughs> so so oh, in the mud. Ugh. I know, but it's so nice to see that, that different stories are being told. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kipo just, uh, is another show that we've been watching. Uh, yeah, you know about the Kipo and the Wonder Beast? I haven't watched it, but I've heard oh. great things about it. Yeah, we watched the first couple uh, of episodes of that one, and the the biggest things that that draw me in often are, um, and this had both of those uh, setting, crazy post apocalyptic setting, and crazy visual style, and the soundtrack. There's a third thing. It's, it's got a super funky soundtrack. It's almost like a yeah. 
Or even thing. more on acid, like <laughs> Gorilla's music video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that yeah. that's been really good. And actually, one of one of our friends pointed out that like the main cast is all non-white people, and and you don't even notice it because you said like it's um it's not cruel for cruelness' sake. Yeah. Just like these types of shows aren't inclusive for inclusivity's sake. It's not like they're going through and saying like ah uh, yes we have the um, LGBT character, and then there's the uh you know like non-white yeah. character. It's like when it's done so well that you don't even notice it. It's yeah. like that's true like inclusion instead of like look how good we yeah. are we we're this. making everyone yeah. so happy by our yeah. stuff you know and that yeah. kind of virtue signaling when what, that you're talking about when they do that inclusivity for the sake of it not just for doing it out of the goodness of their heart is why generally the people who are angry about it ha- have that misguided rage where they lash out in ways that they really don't need to it yeah. was the same thing you did a you did additional voices on last of us part two Mm-hmm. You just have some, I don't know which voices specifically have not beaten that yet. I'm hopefully getting it for Christmas, but um, they, but Last of Us Part 2 had such a crazy backlash and outrage. And the thing that actually bothered me about that, besides obviously the misguided rage that was unnecessary, was one of the things that people were mad about that Ellie is gay. And it's like, well, if you played the original game, she it's in the original game it's not like they just did this and dropped it in to be like look how woke we are or some shit they yeah. literally include that in the original game so if you played the original game you wouldn't have any reason to be upset for your so-called quote-unquote virtue signaling it's just yeah i, I and i can oh. understand the rage because i used to have that mentality like that was a flaw that i had so i can empathize with the thought process even though i disagree and i will try to correct as much as i can going forward but it's like it's it's just something that it's good now that you see more of it where it just when it's not when it's an afterthought like when the inclusivity is an app it's like put on the forefront to a degree but it's also an like it's an afterthought to the viewer like they don't notice it until like oh shit that's you know this is someone who is hispanic or this is someone who is a person of co- another person of color or anything like that or lgbtq or anything like that it's yeah it's great like to we're see. trying to normalize it so the fact that it shouldn't be that much of a shocker it yeah. shouldn't be like ah she's gay it's like yeah she she's just like, is a human yeah she's exactly <laughs> and Josh, I have to commend you for, for, you know, saying that you came from that place and you got out of it. Like that's, that's a really hard thing to say and to um, talk about. So kudos. And, uh, that, no, that's not, it, no, I'm, it's an op- I'm an open book type of person to begin with. And Andrew and Adriana can attest, like we've had hour long conversations and without trying to get into anything too serious, but like after all the, the protests that went down for black lives matter this summer, like I we've had a lot of conversations because I needed to learn more about stuff like that. So it's, and not just me, just like everyone in general, of course, but it's, I've always been that kind of person where it's, I just talk way too much about myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, but no, it, I, I don't know. That's it's, it's Whatever. amazing i don't know how to go from there it's, it's, I, mean, I, I also thing. came from from that place too like josh was saying we, we grew up going to college together and um i, I went through a, a similar um process where it, it's it's amazing what how your life can change when you start interacting and really having meaningful relationships with people that don't look like you and don't sound like you and like hell like I'm married to a black woman, like that will make you (laughs) like so conscious of like your privilege and like it's so yeah the the fact that like we're we're seeing like all these shows and stuff that you're involved with in these games are are almost like gateways for a lot of people to start unlearning their like their prejudices and like just their you know I came from like a little white straight white man bubble and like as soon as I went to art school it was like wait there's other stuff <laughs> so it's I mean, like listen i grew up in boise idaho and you want to talk about straight white republican <laughs> like that was that was my childhood through and through until i went to college and then uh you know i have grown a lot and there's a lot of things i look back on and go oh that was stupid um but you know if we don't grow what's the point mm. truly yeah. what's the point mm-hmm. um to that end what i have been so happy to see is um people really really working 
in the entertainment industry and listen, the entertainment industry has a long way to go. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but like um, Chris Nee, who created um, Doc McStuffins has just signed a new deal with Netflix and she's um, running a bunch of shows, but hiring like there's a, she has a, a native American show that has an all native staff. Oh, that's completely awesome. Native staff. Nice. She's got, um, she's, she's also doing Ada twist scientist, which is um, based on a, a book about a little black girl who's interested in science. And it's an all black writer's room, which is fucking amazing. And then there's it's another, sad that you have to be like this all black story is an all black stuff. <laughs> like it's sad you know, that you have to, be like but finally somebody, in 2020 they're doing it well she the fact has that, you say me that made my heart jump like oh, i don't believe it yeah <laughs> that's sad but like also like but it's but it's time world. like it's time there's a there's a movie on netflix called over the moon um that's based in chinese oh. written yes. by all, all chinese all asian staff and voiced by all asian cast amazing like that that was always kind of a line in the sand for me um personally was you know I, I really don't audition outside of my race. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. Um, that said, I do, you know, sound alikes for trailers for people when they're not available to come in um, because it's not a caricature. I don't do a caricature. I will do a sound alike for something that specific. But then, um, you know, it just never really, I, I've been called in for sessions without an audition and they're like, hey, you're Asian. And I'm like, ah, I'm not. Uh-huh. <laughs> have not. you seen me yeah <laughs> I, like I, I would never do an accent or anything it just felt gross but mm. um yeah it's 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 changing it's it's changing and people are waking up and people are are growing which i think is so important you know as a culture if we don't grow <laughs> we're doomed to repeat the past mm. you know so i'm i'm happy to see a lot of these changes coming yeah um i guess speaking or uh, sticking with the um you you being uh cast um are you because you've worked uh so much at this point are are you finding yourself typecast at at all or um are you able to stay outside that are you always like oh it's another it's another somebody with dead kids or it's another you know (laughs) that's that's what she's typecast as the someone with dead kids kids. (laughs) what a worst type that's the worst type thing to be cast as i mean in in games i get um emotional heavy heavy lifting which is great. I'm I'm happy to do that. Um, I don't know if you played Fury or Dark Siders three. Um, yeah, you're Fury. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the moment when she loses her, uh, the the thing. I'm gonna. Yeah. I don't know. Just really. say spoiler alert if it's gonna be a spoiler. Spoiler alert. Um, the moment when her horse dies, and they were like, "It's gotta, it's gotta hit. It's gotta be heavy." Yeah. And I was like, "Okay, I can do that." <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Like afterwards, I was like, "I'm gonna need a minute." Yeah. Um, I, I, I get a lot of that, but I, I love that. Like I, to be able to give people the experience of, uh, of feeling real emotions in a digital world, I think is, um, I think it's great because we're so numb to so much. Um, yeah. So I, I, I enjoy that a lot, but um, you know, I'm also working on a show called F is for family, which is very much not heartfelt. That's the Bill Burr show, show <laughs> yes. right? I yeah, love Bill Burr. It's He's all, ridiculous. Yeah, it's like fart jokes and, you know, uh, like, it's crazy. Um, but it's fun, you know? Hmm. So it's all over the board. Is there any roles that you want to see yourself cast in more often, or, or is there any... Uh, oh. All of them. Well, yes. <laughs> in a perfect world, if you didn't have to work for money and you were like, is there a specific type of character that you want to play um, that, that you that you aren't? Or Well, aside from trailer, yeah. the one <laughs> um, I'd love to do like Jane Bond. I'd love to do. Oh, man. I mean, I'd love to do Wonder Woman, let's be honest. But but she's been done by so many incredible people. And uh, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But um, no, man, I just I really like the fact that that there's more three-dimensional women um i'm also really excited to 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 help my friends bring things to life you know um i've i've always kind of found that my superpower is connecting people Mm. um and so you know um i'm helping my friend create the show right now and i won't have a role in it which i'm okay with because it doesn't have a place for me but but it needs to be told and Mm. i 
I love that. I love being able to make the connections. And when people hear his idea and they're like, oh my God, um, it, 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 it just, I get warm fuzzies and, and that I'm here for. I'm here for all day. I, I love, love I love it when my friends succeed. Yeah. You know, there's enough to go around. There's enough to and go you, around. I remember when we first recorded, that's kind of like how the whole voiceover industry is from what you said. It's this incredibly supportive group of people considering they were all competing against not all but they're they, you compete against each other yeah. but at the same time you're all rooting for each other and it's kind of like I, I, i've talked to some of my podcasting friends about this and it's interesting when you su- promote other people's podcasts or youtube channels on your own because you're driving people away but it's like it's it's this supportive community where it's just like you just want the other person to do better because that just means your friends are doing cool shit and what's yeah. what's not what doesn't feel great about seeing your friends do cool shit hmm. rising tides right when i yes. so my, my yes. dad was a, a small business owner um and when i was a kid um he's a jeweler so in boise idaho uh when i was a kid every christmas eve we would make hot buttered rum batter and then we would deliver it mm. to his competitors and so you know every Christmas Eve, we'd walk in and they'd be like, Hey, how's it going? You know, it was just this, this annual tradition that we had. And, um, and I, I just always loved that, you know, that it was, it was a camaraderie and it wasn't, um, cutthroat. I don't Mm -hmm. do well in cutthroat. That's not me. Um, cutthroat makes me really just itchy. I don't like it. Well, it tweaks your anxiety then, because then you don't really know who to trust. And it's like, I don't know. I've had this weird thing where I feel like I've had a sixth sense of like friends where it's like, I I only get close to people that somehow end up being really close friends and people that I don't get close to don't like, you know, I don't end up talking to that often. And it's not anything out of like, I've like interact with someone be like, Oh, this person's a piece of shit. I don't like them. It's never been like that direct. It's more just kind of like in the back of my head, uh, I feel like there's this subconscious vibe where I'm just like, I want to talk to this person more or I don't want to talk to this person more. And because of that, it, I'm very thankful. Knock on wood. I haven't really been dicked over by any friends because of that. So it, it, it works yet. out. So I feel like it's yet yeah, Andrew, I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, and I say this with love. Uh, once your baby is born, that circle is about to get a lot smaller. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing. People like us value uh, quality over quantity when it comes with our friends because we're you know we're the same way you're you're one of of a few a small probably under 10 people that i would consider actually like really close friends and i'd I'd rather have that than you know 100 people who are just like oh yeah i know so and so it's just like acquaintances you know Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's what gets you through the rough times yeah um but i i did want to um when i asked you about um roles that you would like to play i wanted to ask if uh so now that you are under the disney umbrella and they own everything including the simpsons are you one step closer to your dream role i would love to think so um (laughs) she can't tell us if she is though that's true (laughs) i mean nothing has happened yet um but i mean i wouldn't turn it down (laughs) yeah I remember you saying like that's pretty much why you wanted to get into voice acting. Like that was like your. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I heard I heard Nancy Cartwright on the radio. Yeah. Talking about voiceover, and I was like, what? Um, and then didn't you just immediately enroll in like acting and, classes? I did, and I emailed her afterwards. I I emailed her fan page, and I was like, you don't know me, but you changed my life. Thank you. And she wrote did back. she respond? Yeah, she was she was great. She was like, that's awesome. Congratulations. Good luck. That's so cool. Um, yeah, it was great. She was. Really I cool. I really hope you get to work with her someday. Me too. That'd be amazing. Me too. On the yeah. Simpsons, hopefully. I mean, <laughs> just anything. It'd be, just it's anything, one of those yeah. things where it's like when you get to work with someone that you've idolized, or not even idolized, but like you look up to and admire. Like it's just such a cool feeling. Oh um, God, that was like when I met Jen Hale. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed she still talks to you after that introduction. <laughs> She's like, are you okay? Do you need, a, do you need an ambulance? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, to kind of like a not so great transition, but to kind of pivot a little bit, we were talking about Call of the Sea, and by the time people hear this, Call of the Sea will be out. It will be out, uh, I bought, what, December 6th, right? Um, so it'll Two be days out before this... Cyberpunk, apparently. <laughs> How many days, sorry? Two days. Well... 
by the time this is out, it'll probably have been pushed back again. <laughs> that's okay. That's I, I love CD Projekt Red, though. That's not. That's all. That's all. A loving joke. Please don't. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't have that large of an audience that people are going to roast you. <laughs> <laughs> you say that now. I know, right? Um, but with Call of the Sea, you said that Firewatch is one of the way is how you kind of got your foot in the door for that project. So, did you actually did did that? Um, did it get you an audition, or did they just offer you the role flat out? They offered it to me, which okay. is really nice and really rare. Um, and you know, they they called to tell me the premise of the game, and uh, I was like, yeah, okay, but say no more. I'm in. Um, which was really great. They were willing to work with the union, um, which is also really great. We talked a lot about that on the last episode. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, yeah, it was, re- it was really good. It- it's funny because Firewatch is either um, uh, people contact me because they want me to work in their thing because of Firewatch, a la Call of the Sea uh, and Forever Ago, or um, they hear my audition and then they realize that I was Delilah and they know that I can pull emotional weight. And so it's, you know, it's been really, really good for that. Thank you, Sean. (laughs) When we, when also, when we last spoke, you mentioned that there was, you mentioned, you mentioned forever go and call the sea. And you also mentioned a third project that you couldn't talk about yet. Is that still on like on the no, no list? Yep. Damn it! I was hoping four months later we could I hear know. a little bit of something. You think? But... Um, well, I won't pressure you to, to <laughs> so you won't give into temptation. You almost uh, heard it first here, folks. I know, right? <laughs> almost. I know. I'm trying to think of like what else can I tell you about? Um... <laughs> well, what what can you say about uh, uh, Call of the Sea? That um, well, I guess it will be out, but to to get it's obviously not a huge triple a title so it's probably not going to be on a lot of people's radars um so can you tell us what's special about it or why somebody should pick it up besides the yeah. fact that you're in it <laughs> well i mean listen that's the main draw I and mean, that's my number uh, one <laughs> <laughs> no it's a it's it's a woman's a one woman's uh rise to sanity instead of a descent into madness Ooh, okay and, i like uh, that it's very much a, yeah <laughs> yeah it's very much um in an in an hp lovecraft world um it's not a horror horror um horror. not a whore uh it's um <laughs> i hate that word i can never say it without horror um but it's it's a it's a really fun oh. puzzle game kind of a la mist if you remember okay mist. Yeah, yeah yeah i actually have a box copy of mist right over there there you go <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's 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 a really cool puzzle adventure game. Um and I'm gonna leave it at that. Mm. <laughs> and it's got Yuri Lowenthal in Lo- it. Lovecrafty and Mist. That's that's enough for me. <laughs> I lo- I watched the trailer just before you you hopped on and I love the visual style of it. Like I actually it's it's very stylized but in a very good way like there's some specifically the one scene that sticks in my head is like you're walking across i don't know if it was on a ship but like this metal walkway and it's raining and it's this beautiful lightning effect and it's just everything shimmering and it's just stunning to look at and i i look now for games that you don't have to have the best graphical fidelity but if their art direction is good then i'm all over it it's one of the reasons i love uh uh, it's one of the reasons I think certain games hold up better than others visually. Like if you go back to the PS2, Medal of Honor does not look good now. It is, <laughs> it's not, the, no offense to, they, you know, people put a lot of freaking yeah. hard work into it. But when you're looking at the visuals now, they don't always hold up too well versus Sly Cooper still looks really good. Yeah. Psychonauts, I, yeah. Like Monument Valley, I think is just forever one of the most yes. games I've ever played. That's my therapy <laughs> game. <laughs> that and <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> So didn't good. i send you monument valley Andrew? uh i think you told me about it yeah yeah i yeah. that's such a like it just visually looks so stunning same thing with like journey and uh have you, any of you played the unfinished swan yeah yes that's a trip that's a yeah. real trip <laughs> so you if you haven't played it to see it's like a i mean if you have i apologize but it's like uh you play it's like a storybook so the the first screen is just completely white no shadows you can't see anything and you hit the trigger on your controller and it shoots a glob of paint so when it hits it just splatters all over the place and as 
So you have to literally kind of paint this world into existence by shooting this paintball thing because everything's there. Like all the geography is already there. You just can't see it because it's just pure white. And as you go through the game, you get different colors of paint, which do different things. So black pretty much is only there just to give the world form to kind of shape the whole world. But you end up getting uh, red and blue and green and they do other things. And it the what was cool was that the there's a narrator the whole time and the person who did the voice for the narrator i believe was one of the developers mothers oh wow yeah it's a really beautiful game it was done by giant sparrow i want to think oh. i think they end up doing what the what they remains of edith finch? finch yeah yep. mm-hmm. oh, that was the one that got away that was the one that got away uh, did you audition for that yeah i did but it was right when the strike happened and i believe they went non-union uh of course but now, um, yeah now i just want to make sure i have that right uh the... if you haven't played greece also g-r-i-s oh my god oh, greece, yes stunning Amazing. absolutely the the watercolor aesthetic of that just blew me i actually bought a physical copy from limited run, limited games. run. literally yeah. s- sight unseen i didn't had any idea what the gameplay was like i just saw the art style i'm like i need this in wow. my life that's so- amazing yeah yeah so good um is there anything else you guys wanted to ask sissy before we kind of wrap things up because we've been going for a little over an hour now so yeah you've been so quiet <laughs> i know, I know. I I'm, just, I'm just so enjoying all of this i am very engaged it is all, it's also one almost one in the morning oh my god i'm so, so sorry no, no, you don't know, have to apologize. If you, like if you had questions or anything i didn't i wanted to make sure we weren't yapping over you the whole time <laughs> you know, like like you guys pretty much i'm like oh you guys are good i'm just gonna take a nice back seat and just like enjoy all of this conversation it's so hard I, I've got, but... don't worry i've written down some stuff that we've talked about i'm like okay i need to check this out okay write down this tumblr tag okay he will snap yeah definitely back. Back. right <laughs> yeah it's hard when we're when we're married it's it's we're we're kind of a hive mind so and the fact that we talked about what we wanted to ask before we came on, it was like, uh, so I tried yeah. to like shut up and I was like, maybe Drianna will say something, but she told us beforehand. She's like, I'm just kind of going to, going to sit and like soak in this, this person's majesty. And we weren't <laughs> even quite sure. This is the first time, at least for, for me and any of whether I've been on their channel or like for my show, we've ever tried to do like a, a three person interview t- for just one individual. So we weren't yeah. quite sure how really to balance it. So literally all of this was done on the fly. We didn't re- right. <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing. I mean, it feels like a conversation amongst friends, right? Which is, that's exactly yeah, what, what you we want. want. That's, exactly <laughs> that's what your whole me. channel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like for our channel, the experience point, like that's what's called the experience point. So like, this is really great because like, example, the Owl House, like me, Andrew and Josh have seen the Owl House, but you have been a part of it. So we're sharing our experiences from different viewpoints. And so that brings us all together. So it is conversation based. So, so yeah. tell me, tell me your experience watching the Owl House. Like I know, I know you enjoy the show, but why? Tell me, tell me what rings with you. All right. Well, I've watched cartoons all my life (laughs) and they are amazing and fantastic. And there is something to be said when it's not just the slapstick. Like I enjoy that. Everyone enjoys a good laugh, but like, I love being drawn in by like these characters that are uplifting or like being seen, for example. So like to go into a show where there's a person of color as the main character and like, it's not like they are a person of color, like, loose just is she just is and like yeah. loose just is and it's amazing because like i would love like to walk around in my daily life and just be and not have you know my skin be the forefront of my mind at all times and that's what i feel with owl house like a lot of these characters just are so like the lgbtq side like 